Howdy, folks. So I want to try to do something. It's kind of a little bit of an experiment, um, but I do have a little bit of a lack of time, and I've been wondering about something for a while. I know there's a lot of guys, and they do some some good content, um, but they don't exactly put in the amount of back-end work that I do. So um, I want to try to kind of tone down some of the effects, the graphics, all that kind of stuff, and see how much of a difference that makes. If you hate it, do me a favor, put a comment down below and just say, listen, bring back the quality or I'm out. If you don't care, then put a comment down below and say, I don't care about all the graphics, just bring me the content. Just so I have an idea of what you guys are interested in. Because again, there's a lot of guys just kind of doing this video that I'm about to do type stuff, and they're doing great. So let me know if it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, then I guess, why am I wasting my time doing all that extra stuff? So, um... Anyways, what I wanted to do is a little series this week um, for the, we'll call them my favorite fan bases. They are the fan bases that uh, give me the most views when I do seven round mock drafts. Sometimes I get 700 views, sometimes I get 7,000 views, and there seem to be certain fan bases that are just, they're all over this. Other fan bases, they just don't seem to show up, so, you know, pump up those numbers if you want me to do a seven round for your team. Um, but that's what we're going to do, and we're going to start with uh, the Mac Daddy of them all. Every single time you do this seven round, it just explodes. It's, it's actually the only time that I can do a seven round mock draft that's probably going to be bigger than a first round mock draft, and that's the Dallas Cowboys. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so for this mock, I'm going to be using um, NFL Mock Draft Database. The guy does a really good job. Very, uh, You can reach out to him. It's just one guy that does this whole thing. He's got a ton of great resources, and the biggest reason that I like what he does and also the biggest reason he makes me very sad, if I may fix this for a moment, is he's actually taken what I've been working on for years and he's just destroyed it because <laughs> there's just no reason for me to do it anymore. Um, he's got this right here, which is the consensus big board. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I, I work very hard on this. It'll take me a, an entire day to update my thing or whatever, but he does exactly what I do. He takes all the boards from around the NFL and he aggregates them into one and here you go. This is, this is all the stuff, and it's got even more detail than I have had. I mean, there's a couple things that I can look at in terms of, you know, where are they being ranked by each one. I can look at it in a snapshot, but it's just it's not really worth the time. But he uses this consensus board, which is nice, because if you go to any other mock draft site, they have their own board. I don't know if I want to use your board. Um, so this just gives you a better overall view of what, what the NFL landscape thinks of these prospects, and I like that. So, um that's what we'll be using. We've got Dallas, seven-round mock. Um, as far as trades, we'll kind of see how it goes. But, um, you know, I'm, the only thing I don't like, if you pause this, it goes a couple picks. But we'll try to take it slow, and, and I want to build an idea of what it is that I'm looking for. Obviously, doing these mock drafts and getting the feedback and everything, I'm slowly learning. But obviously, that's changing and everything else. So I want to try to get my own opinions in here. These are the general resources I use. You've got uh, PFF here that gives you all the positions, all the grades. I've got um, some more in-depth PFF stuff. You've got college. I can look up the college prospects if I want to go that route. We've got the contract situation. The guys in blue are all free agents. The guys in yellow are uh, in the final years of their contract, so that's important to know. These are our picks, so I get an idea of how much you know, capital we have to use. Um, but I will say the one thing that I've been looking at the most that I really like for the Dallas Cowboys is offensive line. Um, obviously, Panay Sewell did go at three here, which is what I think is the right pick. A lot of places don't have that. That would be the one thing automatically if he starts falling in this range here. Or I, I he wouldn't make it past the Bengals. But it, it's something to consider. Otherwise, I'm kind of looking at, uh, you know, guys like Rashawn Slater or whatever that I really like. I know cornerback is also really big, and that depends. Some of the guys like Patrick Sertan have been falling. That's a major consideration if he does fall all that way. But those are just kind of the things. I don't know that I want to trade up. I don't think I would trade up for Patrick Sertan. It's kind of a, if he falls, let's do it. Um, and then trade back as a possibility. But again, if, if Slater's there, which he should be, I'm probably just going to take him. So we'll just let this kind of play out and see what's there. And um, we'll kind of go from there. So there goes Sertan and Farley. So Sertan and Farley are gone. That kind of solidifies. I mean, if I want to look at cornerback... You got J.C. Horn, but I just there's no way I should reach for that. Um, Kyle Pitts is an option, to be completely honest with you. It's kind of silly because, you know, 
I think a lot of Cowboys fans are going to look at it and say we definitely want defensive help, right? I think even offensive line is going to upset some people. But the biggest thing that I'm coming in here and I'm looking at is although the contracts aren't super terrible, when I come in and look at the offensive line, and I know you guys don't want to hear it, but who is our really, really good offensive lineman? We got Zach Martin, right? You got Lael Collins, who's at least was good last year. Um, and then the other really big guy that everybody's super interested in, if I can hurry this up, is Tyron Smith. I don't even know if he's on here. He is. Look at this. I mean, look, I, I, I get it that he was hurt, right? I understand he's got injury history and all that, but look at this. The guy's been declining since 2015. So the, the consensus that I've seen, and I don't know where Cowboys fans are at on this, but the consensus seems to be, it kind of depends on his injury history. If we think that he's he's got some damage or whatever and he can't come back to, to form, then fine, we should move on. Otherwise, like, if he can come back, come back to what, dude? The guy's been declining since 2015. There is no coming back. He's not going to come back to being 25 years old. He's 30 years old. So, um, you know, I've been kind of disappointed with the offensive line. If we just look at the snapshot here, um, Again, I mean, it's just even if even if we look at it and say Leo Collins is going to stay at this level, which there's no reason to believe he wouldn't go back to this. This could be an easily an outlier and he goes back. But even so, you know, we got Martin here who's 30 years old. This this was the strength of our team. This is why I've been saying this for so long. This is our strength. And look what it's become. This is terrible. So I know we need to address this. No question we need to address this. But I just, you know, we, we've got the talent here and here and hopefully here and here we got to get this going so that's kind of where i'm at with this and this is why for me i'm going rashawn slater at pick 13. all right so i i stopped the video and just kind of let this play out so we can take a look at what's been going on here if you want to see it but i didn't feel like waiting i, I paused it here though because now we're kind of getting into we're getting close and um i'm definitely looking defense one of the things if you come over here you can see obviously a lot of linebackers are going to be gone our corners are, it's getting a little dire there outside of digs. We need some help over there. Um, safety is a consideration. Also, anything along the defensive line. Alden Smith is a free agent. Durance Armstrong is in the final year of his contract. We need some help opposite Demarcus Lawrence, and then obviously the interior. So as we look at uh, what we've got here, um, we've got some options. And I considered trying to move up because you got Davion Nixon, uh, you got Carlos Basham, you got Levi and Wuzurike. But I kind of, as I think about it, it's like, why don't we just see who these three are going to pick? And then we'll reconsider because we've also got Asante Samuel, who's a very, very good, very, very talented player. And I'm, I'm kind of leaning that way anyways. But we'll see who's available here as we play this out. If it was just Basham and nothing, you know, we had Bolton and Creed and uh, Dylan Radins and all these. And, you know, there was nothing else. I'd probably want to move up. But we've got so many options. Let's just play it out and see what we got here. And obviously, almost none of them, except Davion Nixon, who I'm not a big fan of, um, are gone. Now the biggest problem is, do we go Asante Samuel or Eric Stokes, who apparently ran a 4-2-5? Um, or do we go Carlos Basham and try to get that, that pass rush going? I'm kind of torn, because if I look at this, we, we've got, a, we've got our, our guy, right? This is our guy. Long term, this is our guy. And technically, we could say that this is our guy, although he's, he's got a little bit of, of growing to do, you know. Um, I know you guys are real excited about him. He was good, not great. I, I really think I'm leaning corner because this guy is, is, our, is our main number one guy. We can find other additional guys here. I want to get some additional help at cornerback, so I think I'm leaning toward Asante Samuel here with the second pick. All right, so again, I let it run out because I don't want to just sit through all that. You can kind of see we did have some opportunities to come up and get some edge guys, but there's a guy sitting right here by the name of Ronnie Perkins that I like that I think could come in and be a big help. We've also got a bunch of defensive line options. we got some big boys, Marvin, Alim McNeil, and then we got Jalen Twyman, who's also sitting here. So what we can do, we can kind of look at a few of these guys using this here and take a look at what we've got going on. Um, I'm leaning edge, no question about it. He didn't play in 2020, so we'll look at his 2019. Here's Jalen Twyman, six foot two, 290. Played only two years, but is obviously a pretty good football player. 36 pressures out of 444 attempts is not great, even though he had 11 sacks. And this is one of those things where this is what's going to make him really, really popular. This is a really bad number. This is not great. Just the fact that most of his pressures turned into sacks, you know, whatever. But 
decent enough run defender and tackler and all that kind of stuff. Um, he's not just a big, giant nose tackle like a lot of these other guys are. Marvin Wilson was considered a first-round prospect, but obviously he fell off quite a bit, and the reason is 2020 was real bad for the guy if you look. So he's 6'5", 305. He's not, he's not a monstrous person. This is the issue right here in 2020. Somebody's got to get to the bottom of it, and uh, you know if they can reconcile why he went so far downhill – you know, from 2019 to 2020, you look, the guy did not play very well at all. Um, 10 pressures on 127 attempts and one sack is just not very good. Um, and then if we look finally at Mr. Alim McNeil out of NC State, just to get a look at the defensive tackle, see if anything, I got so many tabs. If we look at Alim McNeil here, you can see in six foot two, 320, so he's that kind of a guy. But look at this. I mean, this is the exact opposite, right? He's a good football player, good football player. Oh, my goodness, this guy's a freak. Now, 12 pressures on 267 attempts and no sacks. This, this is what everyone's going to see, and they're going to hate it, although seven the past year was pretty impressive. But again, remember, he's not a pass rusher. He's a run defender. If you're into that, cool, right? Makes complete and total sense. But again, the guy that's got me the most excited here is Mr. Ronnie Perkins, edge rusher out of Oklahoma. Um, I know a lot of people like him insofar as, I mean, he's even shown up in first-round mocks. A lot of people like him as a second-round pick. As we sit here uh, midway through the third, he's definitely a strong consideration. You can see, again, very similarly, decent in 2018, took a big step in 2019, and then just completely blew up. Now, it's an abbreviated season, and you can see this is why Right, this is the reason why he blew up so much. But um, I mean, 32 pressures on 176 attempts, right off the bat. But I'm looking for is 10%. 10% is, I mean, it's not good. But if you're less than 10%, you're kind of trash. If you're above 10%, then maybe you're kind of good. This is massively above 10%. We're talking 32 divided by what was it? 176, 18%. I mean, that's like peak Khalil Mack numbers. That's um, those are dominant numbers. Now, in college, you get a little bit more of that. You see guys in the 20s or whatever, but that's that's beyond solid. And again, a lot of people don't see these numbers. They just see, why is this thing not working right now? They just see, it's not working. That's weird. They just see the 32 right here. Or excuse me, they just see the three. They don't see the 32, and they think this guy's not that great. Three sacks, and two of them came against Kansas. Who cares? Dude, I'm telling you, he was terrorizing people every single week. I mean, outside of week one, he's getting four pressures a game. At, at at least so um yeah i think we're gonna go that route i think we're gonna take ronnie perkins here to get a secondary edge rusher to help out this defense all right so we're, we're, once again fast forwarding a little bit you can see what happened here i was checking out hunter long as a possibility at tight end but if you look jalen twyman is still an option we're at pick 100 and jalen twyman is still sitting there so i think i'm gonna try to make a trade and the way that they have this set up here um i'm trying to try to trade with houston so from here to here, and you can see they've got a little system. Where did it go? Um, so if we give a sixth, I'm just curious, and I'm being a little bit kind of shady here, but if I offer next year's fifth, <laughs> I mean, could we move up? Um, according to this, it's doable. And you can see it's kind of cool. They show you where it's, you know, obviously this is way too heavy in their favor if we offer... We could even offer next year's six, next year's seventh. Jeez, I'm not I'm not I'm not going to be completely ridiculous. In fact, let's stick with this year just so we can feel the pain a little bit. Let's offer this year's seventh just to be able to move up. Because um, again, I, I don't like when people do that, especially when I do the mocks or whatever, and people trade away all next year's stuff so they don't actually have to feel the pain. They just get whatever they want. We're going to feel the pain a little bit and move up here because. Again, Jalen Twyman is a third-round prospect sitting at a, in the 70s. We're sitting here at 100. I don't want him to fall anymore. So we're going to go ahead and draft Jalen Twyman out of Pittsburgh. So we went and satisfied. If you look here, we got a defensive lineman, we got an edge rusher, and we've got a corner. So we're starting to make, on top of obviously getting a tackle that's going to be able to uh, be the tackle of the future, um, at least at some point, if not immediately. Uh, we'll have to see exactly how that pans out. And I want to pause this so we don't get too far ahead, and we'll fast forward in just a moment. All right, so since I don't have any other um, picks for this year, I kind of wanted to just let it run out and then see exactly who's available. And I'm kind of, here's where I'm leaning. Interior offensive line to be able to help out, obviously, the offensive line, which still needs a little bit more work. 
Um, linebacker, because of the situation, as I pointed out before, if you look here, we've got guys like Sean Lee and whatever that are leaving Leighton Vander Esch, who's been declining in terms of his talent level uh, for whatever. I don't know why, if he had some kind of a horrific injury that he just hasn't recovered from or what. Um, just not what it what it seems to be. And we know that the Dallas Cowboys have been trying to get a safety for quite a long time. So that's kind of what I'm leaning toward. Interior offensive line, safety, or linebacker. And if you look at, I think this is the earliest. We got 157, you got 187 here, and then linebacker is 185. So this is the, the best prospect available in those positions. So let's see if this is the guy that we want to grab. Take a look at Josh Bledsoe. And again, we're getting kind of late. So it just kind of is what it is. You're not going to get top tier talent. I just don't want any massive red flags. Um, and if I come over, what, what are we looking for here in terms of safety? Um, Xavier Woods, I don't even know. Um, so we're kind of looking for probably more of a, a, I don't want to say pure coverage guy because everybody does a little bit of everything, but, um, Obviously, that is the strength of Mr. Joshua Bledsoe at six foot two hundred pounds. He's more of a coverage guy than he is a, a run defense tackling whatever guy. And again, it's pretty bad. It's not great here, but it's we're we're talking sixth round. Uh, I think one of the more concerning things is if you look over here, he gave up four touchdowns this past year. The year before, four touchdowns. Three. He gives up a lot of touchdowns. He's had one interception in his entire career. He does get a lot of pass breakups. There's no question about it. But I don't know, man. Again, I know it's late, but let's just let's keep looking. Um, the one good thing about interior offensive line is it's one of the few positions that you can find where they might actually be a contributor. The the odds that Josh Bledsoe, I know we want to draft the position, but the odds that he's actually going to play and start are very low. Um, I'm assuming we're looking at this guy here. Is that who he is? Yeah, Grambling State. Um, let's just go over to allowed pressures here. 6'3", 320. Uh, he didn't play this year, so let's go back another year. Obviously not the biggest school in the world, but we're looking at a guy who's never given up a single sack. He gave up uh, two hits in three years, three hurries, so five total pressures in three years. Um, primarily a left guard, did play a little bit of right guard. So if we come over to here and look, um, actually let's go here instead. Um I think we've got the right side figured out, so left makes a little bit more sense. I'm kind of leaning. I mean, this this makes sense. If nothing else, he's competition, right? He's a guy that you can bring in. Maybe he starts, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's depth. I don't know, but it's something to consider. Um, he seems to be, I mean, outside of this not being a great year, um, a pretty solid pass blocker, right? I mean, again, where's the, the real competition that he's had? It's kind of hard to find we can find one team that's decent and how well did he do and, and obviously these things are scary although he played right guard so maybe that's just one of those things we need to keep him away from that position but you don't like to see that you know because you worry about what if he comes to the nfl and that's just what he is all the time but Tulane, i don't know i i think this is kind of where i'm leaning the only other option would be to look at a linebacker and again i don't know although patty fisher man talk about a fall from grace this guy was considered a first round prospect for a long time never really understood why but Anyways, he was. Um, bring that up to 2020. Good old Pat. Well, here you go. This is why. So I, I think I think he was a, a first-round prospect even last year. And then it was kind of one of those things they discovered. You know, he really fell off when people actually really delve into the tape. And then he goes back another year, and it's like, I don't know, man. It's just not good. So I don't know exactly what happened to Mr. Patty Fisher. He was an elite run defender, solid in coverage. His coverage hasn't really fallen off all that much. Um, but just the, the ability to stop the run and tackle and all that has just completely fallen off. It's interesting, though. He's 23 years old. He's got four years of experience. He's obviously shown some real talent at linebacker. Um, it's not a premier position like quarterback, edge rusher, or whatever, tackle. Like, you know you know he's not going to start and be very good. I mean, the odds are almost zero. I think Lael Collins might have been a seventh-round pick, but that's a separate issue. That's got nothing to do with why Patty Fisher is in the seventh round. Um, 6'4", 240, he seems to have the profile, kind of a leaner, uh, taller, leaner kind of a guy. <clears throat> I don't know what exactly his speed is. I don't see any of that. But, um, again, coverage doesn't seem to be a massive problem. He's given up one touchdown in four years at uh, North. I don't know. I don't hate this so much. I know you guys probably want something else, but I, I, I don't mind this. I think I'm going to go with Patty Fisher. 
That's what we're doing. We're going to try out Patty. Again, it's just we're going to throw them in the mix, and we're going to see if we come over to Kia and take a look um, at the competition level at linebacker. You know, I mean, first of all, who's the more recent guy? You got Leighton Van Der Esch, who, again, look at this. I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not good. This is his rookie year. This is his second year. This is his third year. It's just, he's fallen off in a massive kind of a way, but it was a, a early investment. We had an early investment in 2016 with Jalen Smith. That's not going well. Sean Lee is, he's been done for a while. I mean, who's the super talented linebacker on this team? Do you see him? I don't see him. So, um. Again, he's going to compete, and you know if, if Jalen kind of finds his groove and starts playing better, if Leighton starts playing better, cool. Then we got depth. Um, but either way, you know we got Sean Lee's probably gone. Joe Thomas, are, are any of these guys coming back? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm feeling pretty good about that pick. Um, I guess we can let this run out, but that's going to be the end of it. And um, we'll take a look at. Sure, we'll save it. Why not? We should probably donate. We should probably be a good guy. I am supporting him on uh, Patreon because of the work he does. But here we go. So, again, it was extremely heavy defense, but that first pick was offensive line. The biggest regret is not finding more offensive linemen. Um, you know, free agency is obviously going to be able to help focus this a little bit. But, again, as I look at offensive line, um, you know, the tackles maybe, and, and depending on who plays where, right, is, is one of these guys going to play at guard, whatever. But even so, um, with drafting a tackle, we can kick – um, maybe Zach Martin inside or whatever, keep Lael at right tackle. But then it's then it's what? You know, Connor Williams obviously is is okay, but I mean okay. Um center, I know you got Tyler Biotish, and last time I tried to to get you a center, you got all mad at me or whatever. 32nd out of 36 centers. Maybe he gets better, but maybe he doesn't. He's a fourth round pick. Why do why do we just assume we drafted somebody we don't need that anymore? Why do we do that? I don't know why we do that. It doesn't make any sense to me. But, um, you know, maybe not pushing him out. But again, competition wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So I don't know. I, I think at least, at, at the very least, let's put it this way. we got a tackle. So we've got a left tackle. We've got a right tackle. We have a right guard. We have a left guard, assuming we're okay with Connor Williams being there, which I guess we probably are. And we'll hope that Tyler Biotis takes a step and becomes a good... So we have... The human beings. It's not like we don't even know who's going to play. We know what the offensive line is. We're good with it. I think we can still improve it, but that's fine. Um, and then again, the, the major focus was was defense. Um, early priority was getting another cornerback, another young, talented guy to come step in there. Worked a lot on this front, including Patty Fisher, um, who I think has a legitimate shot of playing, at least in a rotational capacity. Jalen Twyman, Ronnie Perkins, exact same thing. You know, especially when you look at, you know, these guys possibly, probably leaving. I think there's a very good chance that you see both of them playing, at least in some capacity. Um, it's always tough doing mock drafts because you never have enough picks, which is why I probably shouldn't have traded it up. But again, you've got a third round prospect sitting there in the fourth round. I'm going to move up a couple spots and get him. But uh, do they show you what the, that would have been a good little feature. I was just curious um, to see what the compensation was, but. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm happy with it. I, I think the Dallas Cowboys in general are a team that are, are massively underperforming based on their talent, and I think you guys know that. You have a good football team, there's no question, especially the offense. Um, the defense needs some work, which is why we put so much there. But I, I, I really think bring back your quarterback, um, and you know you got the wide receivers. You, you help bolster that offensive line a little bit, and assuming they stay healthy, I mean, you not only have talent, but you've got depth now because even if some of these guys play or don't play, whatever, we've got additional options along the offensive line. Um, but it really just comes down to finding the right play callers to to know what to do because the amount of talent on this on this offense is kind of ridiculous, especially when you got the wide receivers. Like we, you know, you drafted C.D. Lamb last year and you didn't even need the guy. So um, the only other thing maybe would have been a tight end, but. You know, again, we've only got so many picks. The other cool thing about doing something like this is it gives you an idea of where, where we need to go in free agency. You look at it and say, you know, if we could just satisfy that in free agency, we don't have to worry about it. You know, get a guard or something, and we don't have to worry about that stupid nonsense. Um, and then we can focus on things that you want to draft for rather than get a, a free agent, like tackle, like corner. I mean, you can get a corner or whatever, but long-term it would be nice. Actually, short-term wouldn't be horrible either because we've got a really young guy bringing in a, a Richard Sherman type or whoever um, to be able to come in and help coach him up while we find, you know, work on finding that additional backup guy. Maybe we bring him in anyways. I mean, we're pretty thin at corner. You look at, 
you know, these are young guys, so maybe they're coming back. Um, but either way, it, it might not be the worst idea to maybe go a little bit later with corner and then bring in a free agent. I don't know. Just there, there's a lot of lot of different possibilities for a team that, um, you know, we, we're looking at it. We don't have a billion picks to satisfy everything, but that's the direction we went. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you very much for checking out the video. I hope you'll hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell notification. And again, the most important thing, let me know what you think about the format. Um, it's obviously a lot easier for me to come downstairs, turn on a simulator, run through some stuff, and just, just do it that way. Because this is what I do anyways, and then I produce a video. But if I, if I don't have to produce a video afterward, I mean, I don't like it. I like doing better quality stuff. But if you don't care, then then I guess I shouldn't care either. But um, let me know. I mean, if you, if you genuinely like it, we'll go back. If you don't, maybe we won't. I don't know. But, uh, I, you know, it's about giving you what you want. And, and that's that's what my job is here, not just satisfying my own preferences, ego, whatever. Um, but otherwise, you folks have yourselves a fantastic day. Uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow. We've got more mocks coming up. And uh, I'll catch you next time.